Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So I want to relate an experience that I just had because I think it so speaks to what a lot of us experience in bright line eating when we've been doing it for years and years um, and many, perhaps many, many years beyond that, uh, lots of years. So if we've been doing it for a while, we might have noticed some patterns, some persnickety habits, bad habits that have crept into our Bright Line Eating program. And if we've tried to fight them, uh, it can feel defeating and frustrating because ingrained habits are hard to shake. They're hard to kick. They're hard to change. The brain's wiring gets established. And yes, neuroplasticity is a thing. And yes, human beings can change. And it often can be really difficult. So I want to speak to an experience I just had going to New York City for five days. So I just flew there, just flew back. It's a short flight from where I live in Rochester, New York, under an hour. And I went on Wednesday midday and I came back Sunday in the afternoon. So five days of this experience and I was eating in restaurants most of the time. So every day I had my weight and measured breakfast in my hotel room but lunch and dinner were out and about in the city. And it was um, partly a work trip, partly a pleasure trip. I was visiting a lot of friends. I have a lot of dear people in New York City and uh, Hay House is in New York City. So it was a, a literary trip. I was visiting my editor and my agent and um, people like that. Anyway, we do have a book coming out being published by Hay House. Um, in 2023, October of 2023, and it's gonna be called Daily Bright, and it's a daily meditation reader. So it was partially a work trip, um, and I was meeting people over a lot of meals. You know, we were meeting over lunch, we were meeting over dinner, there was a lot of that happening, and I was going into the trip feeling kind of daunted because, frankly, restaurants have been really challenging for me, and you know, I haven't been eating out much lately. I've been eating out once every couple weeks, maybe, with my family, uh, but mostly not eating out. And so the thought of 10 restaurant meals over a five-day span, lunch and dinner out every day, it just felt uh, like a lot. And it was a lot. It was a lot. And to be fair, if I had really wanted to, there are things I could have done to not eat out so much. I could have said, I'm not free to meet you for dinner, but I'm happy to meet you for tea afterwards, you know, and let's talk over tea for two hours. Like I totally could have done that. But I guess I felt um, up for it and like it would be okay. And yeah, for whatever reason, that's how I decided to structure the trip. So it was a big win. It was a big win. And I want to share with you some of the specific strategies I did to make it a big, bright win. And I wanna share how this relates to the overall context of my journey in Bright Line Eating, which if, you, if you've been watching the vlog for a long, long time, this will be very familiar. If you're newer to the vlog, uh, it might be surprising to you to hear that I have struggled with my food in various ways over the years, absolutely. And I think it's illustrative and helpful to know that someone can struggle repeatedly historically and then do things different and triumph today, have a, have a bright experience today and break out of old patterns. So the history is that, you know, I was, uh, I got bright, if you will, in a 12 step program for food addiction, right? Um, first many, many years in a 12 step program for compulsive overeaters did not find lasting recovery there, went to a much stricter program for food addicts and lost my excess weight, got bright, relapsed, gained back all my excess weight, and then uh, got it again and uh, stayed what they call abstinent in that program for many, 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 many years. During those years, I had three children. And at some point after having those kids, restaurants just got harder because, well, <laughs> because I had three kids. Oh my gosh, have you ever been to a restaurant with three little kids? Uh, not a very easy experience, <laughs> to say the least. And the careful eyeballing of quantities that um, is sort of required if you're not going to use a digital food scale to keep the quantities bright 
in a restaurant meal just became really hard and overwhelming. And at some point, I sort of let go of trying. And I think that was around the time that I started Brightline Eating. My kids were oh, six, six, and three, six, six, and two, six, six, and three, around the time that I started Brightline Eating, um, left the 12 step uh, food program. And from then on, restaurants were really challenging with the three kids. And just a part of me just sort of felt exhausted in restaurants. Like I, I just can't muster the force of presence and will to like look at this plate of food and figure out, you know, whether the quantities are acceptable. And frankly, if you've weighed a bright meal according to the Brightline Eating Food Plan, you know, especially when it comes to veg vegetables, we get a mountain of food. Like it's a lot of food. And so I think I used that, a part of me, used that um, reality as a, a scapegoat for like just eating way too much in restaurants, just eating tons of food and just going, well, we get a lot of food, right? But I knew very well, we don't get that much fat, we don't get that much protein, we don't, uh, even there's a limit with vegetables, right? We don't get that much uh, vegetable. It's hard to find that much in terms of vegetables, but some Mediterranean restaurants will load it on, you know. So anyway, I developed a pattern of bad behavior in restaurants. I mean, bad is such a judgy word, whatever. Um, but yeah, like, like uh, uh, what would be the word? Like, um, like I didn't care. I wasn't really trying to follow the fourth bright line in restaurants. And a little over six months ago, after um, really not eating sugar and flour for uh, a couple years, now it's been three years, uh, being really good with the first three bright lines, like immaculate with the first three bright lines, I had a, 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 a break inside where I just had a spiritual, emotional bottom. And I, I hit that bottom and I decided I was gonna be bright in restaurants. Um, I decided to go back to day one and I decided to really clean up my act. And since then, my main strategy has been to eat out way less, <laughs> way less often. So going to New York City and eating in all these restaurants was a big deal for me. I mean, if you watched the vlog back in, I, years ago, five years, seven years ago, I was trying in restaurants. I was do. I did this thing called like a 30 day restaurant challenge. I shot a vlog, I said, oh, I've been not, not being honest with my quantities in restaurants. I shot a vlog about it. 30 days later, I checked in and um, yeah, I might've done well for a while, but then it just eroded again and it just got sloppy. <sighs> All right, so for six months, I've been really bright in restaurants. I rock up to New York City, what do I do different? Well, first of all, I prepared before the trip quite a bit. I um, got clear on some of the restaurants I'd be eating in. I looked at their menus online. I called the restaurant to say, um, do you make accommodations? Like I follow a pretty specific food plan. Um, for example, I see here on the menu, you don't have an easy, a garden salad. You know, all the salads had cheese and craisins and, you know, bosque pears and all sorts of stuff mixed into them. I'm like, can I just get a, a garden salad that's just vegetables? Can you make accommodations? And um, a couple of the restaurants seemed hard, so I picked other restaurants and I found restaurants that would be accommodating. Um, I also lined up support for myself. I really activated my support structure. And when I landed in New York City, I had an agreement with my beloved Lyndon Morris Del Rio, who's a Brightline Eating coach and someone very close in my support circle. To me, she's in my mastermind group. Uh, and Lyndon was um, gonna be there for me to, for me to bookend my meals. So before I went into a restaurant, I would leave her a voice memo, just saying I'm going in. And when I would come out, I would leave her a voice memo saying, I, I got out of there, here's how I did, it went great. And having that person there for me, waiting for my messages, knowing, I mean, she was going through her own stuff at the time, so it's not like she was waiting for my messages, but she would get them and she would respond. And that was a big way that I got myself support. Um, I wanna share some of the nuts and bolts that I did differently. Um, I was really, now this is grace. This is just what happens when you have surrendered a certain issue on a deeper level. I was really um, grateful and surprised and astonished really at how the part of me that used to see restaurants as a way to get 
a sexier, oilier, bigger meal wasn't clawing at me the way it used to. Instead, from the top down, like like a dampening effect almost, there was um, such a desire in me to just navigate that meal with integrity that and there was some fear in me, not not of the not fear of the terrible kind, but fear of the um, like appropriate, afraid of a challenging thing, kind of um, like on point, on guard, right? The fear that 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 crops up on us when we're getting close to um, a cliff, you know, that we don't want to get too close to that that sort of um, heightened awareness. I would go into the restaurant and I'd be I prayed. I prayed under my breath. I prayed to myself, like, just God, help me. Help me to be honest in this restaurant. Help me to navigate with my quantities. Help me to order the simplest bright meal. I just wanted the simplest bright meal. And, um, and I did. I ordered the simplest bright meal in all the restaurants. And they were delicious meals. I mean, really, really fabulous meals. And one of the strategies I used was I would look at the menu, but I would really, when the waiter came over, I would just say, I need to order off the menu here a bit. Can you grill me some salmon and just put a big mound of sauteed spinach beside it and make it really plain and simple, no sauces? Uh, can you do that for me? And can you make me a garden salad? Oh my gosh, this one restaurant that was all about their fresh vegetables, they're like, um, well, tomatoes and carrots and cucumbers are not in season, so I can make you a garden salad, but it's gonna have lettuce and radishes. <laughs> That's what's in season, because <laughs> their salads were all, you know, walnuts and cheese and craisins and, and pears, right? So um, they're like, we can make you a salad. And I said, that's fine. Bring me a salad that's lettuce and radishes. That's great. And then I ordered a dish of olive oil, a dish of vinegar on the side. It's shocking how hard that is for some restaurants. They bring me, one brought me a dish of, ol a dish of olive oil and a dish of vinaigrette. <laughs> I was like, can I have vinegar instead of vinaigrette? One just brought me a dish of olive oil and vinegar mixed together. They just, anyway, yeah, the, for some reason, the olive oil and vinegar can be hard for some restaurants. God bless them. Um, but I ordered off the menu. I just said, this is what I need. Can you do it for me? And they were very accommodating. I had some incredibly fabulous, just wonderful, bright meals. Now, when the food came, this is the next thing that I did. I slowed down. I think my conditioning from having three kids at a, at a dinner table screaming and needing things and and it created a an urgency in me like the food gets served i gotta like i gotta find the salt and pepper i gotta eat the food i gotta blah, 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 blah. and i just took a breath and i looked i really looked at the food and anything that was over i sometimes i would like take my fork and like lift up the piece of salmon or you know push the vegetables around on the plate a little bit to get a sense of the size and girth and mass and, and weight. I was trying to get a sense of like, how much food is really here? And then I would use my side plate and take anything I wasn't gonna eat off the plate, onto the side plate. And before I took the first bite of food, I would breathe, just breathe and assess my food. Now, in a couple cases, I had a nudge niggling little voice that said, uh, like, I think you might have left too much protein on that. That might still be too much protein or uh, that might be too much baked potato or whatever it was. And I would make an extra little cut and take more off. I didn't want my my objective was I wanted to walk out of the restaurant feeling free and triumphant and so bright which is how I felt with every restaurant meal. And I just wanted that feeling. I didn't want to walk out feeling guilty or questioning myself or wondering if I'd eaten too much food. I didn't want that. I wanted to give my future self the gift, the gift of knowing I had been so bright. So I would honor the nudge that said, oh, maybe that's still too much protein. So I would take another little cut off. And then once my food was established, I would breathe and start eating, and then I would ignore, ignore all the little nudges that said, maybe you didn't get enough vegetable, maybe you didn't get enough protein, maybe you didn't get enough baked potato that would try to get me to take additional bites 
uh, off that sl side plate again. I ignored those nudges. Once I had already like made my determination that that was my bright portion, that was my weighed and measured with my eyeballs portion, whew, I didn't, uh, I didn't go back on it. And then I'd get out of the restaurant and I'd leave Lyndon a voicey message and uh, yeah, oh my gosh, meal after meal after meal went so great. Now I did take advantage of uh, one afternoon I was meeting a dear friend um, for lunch and we met at Whole Foods where I could weigh my food off the food bar. Now you, you might be saying, Susan, you can weigh your food in a restaurant, weigh your food in the restaurant. And I think that's a choice that a lot of people make. I feel like for me at this point in my journey, I'm not bringing my scale into more upscale restaurants. I'm bringing them into buffets and cafeterias and places like that, but in more upscale restaurants, I'm eyeballing my food. That's just how I feel comfortable. So that's what I'm doing, and that's why all the focus on, you know, making sure the quantities were good, but oh my gosh, absolutely. A couple times, once in a Whole Foods and once in one of those, New York City has all these places with the big, uh, the big buffets, like, uh, yeah, like it's just a big buffet aisle of prepared foods. They have a lot of them, and so I had lunch in one of those places, so I was able to weigh and measure a few more meals than breakfast. Now for breakfast, what I did was I packed my little weighed and measured baggies of oats, um, uh, little weighed and measured baggies of ground flax seeds, and I stayed in a hotel where I know on the corner uh, there's a place where I can buy yogurt, I can buy fresh fruit, um, and so that's what I did. And I weighed and measured my food. You know, hotels have a coffee maker, and you can use that to make hot water, so that's good for quick oats, two-minute oats cook up really easily with just some hot water. I brought my own Pyrex bowl from home uh, so I can make my breakfast. And I brought a little, little half of a sponge, like literally a kitchen sponge cut in half with a little bit of um, liquid dish soap that I put into a little travel squeezy container thing. Um, so I was able to wash out my breakfast bowl each day. Yeah, it worked brilliantly. Oh my gosh. And the the upshot of this is, you know, here it is holiday time, it's December, and I am bright and feeling grateful and feeling free, and my weight is right solidly within my, my bright body range, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm just so grateful. The benefits of not having the food chatter in my mind, the benefits of not having a part of me you know, thinking all day about where we're gonna eat and how I can, you know, game it to make the, the, the best, biggest, sexiest meal. Oh my gosh, I feel so free. I feel so free. <sighs> so if you have any patterns that are feeling tired and old and frustrating and entrenched, I just wanna say they can change, they can. It's been almost seven months now and all the restaurant meals I've eaten in these seven months have been honest and true and square and bright. And as a result of that, I'm not wrangling with my weight as much. I'm not wrangling with my mental state as much around food. And I feel much more calm, much more peaceful, much more grounded. And my well being has been really, really high and steady. So it's possible to reverse entrenched behavior patterns with the food. It really is, but it takes a surrender, it takes willingness, and then it takes using the tools and taking action. Oh, thanks for letting me share this win. <laughs> this win on my journey with restaurants. Ah, restaurants have been my nemesis all this time, and it's so sweet to feel free. So sweet to feel free. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.